Hi, this is Lee from Real Spirit Dynamics and I'm in Durham again today. This is the Pelaw Woods, the woods next to my house in Durham City. And what I want to talk about today in this video is the simulation theory. Now if you've seen the Matrix you will have a pretty basic idea of this. Uh, basically all this life as we know it could be a simulation. Now it is just a theory at the moment but scientists are finding more and more evidence to support the fact that this is a simulation as they are to support the fact that it's not. So this is pretty life-changing stuff and I think it's worth talking about. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about some of the evidence that's here to support the fact that this is a simulation. And when I explain this, I'm gonna put it in the simplest way possible so that anybody can understand this. And what I wanna start with is the Big Bang. Now, science tells us the Big Bang started from nothing, but science also tells us that nothing can be created from nothing. So, the only thing in this physical world that can be created from nothing is something within a computer program that's programmed to create something from nothing. So if all this is a simulation, then it is a far more advanced and powerful simulation than what we have created here as humans so far. The reason I say this is because when we look at everything on a subatomic level, which means we look through the most powerful scientific microscopes possible, what we see is that everything around us, including ourselves, are made up of matter. And matter itself is so small that there are over 50 trillion atoms in every grain of sand. And what's surprising is that every single atom, when looked closely, it's actually made up of 99.99999% empty space. So what this means is that if we condense this whole world down so that there was no empty space in each atom, the whole world would reduce to the size of an apple. So when we look at a particle closely, it's comprised of a nucleus in the centre and electrons that spin around the nucleus. Now the electrons spin at the speed of light, which is the fastest possible speed within this simulation. So when we look at the nucleus, it's comprised of positive and negative particles that merge together. And it's the amount of these particles that determine how many electrons spin around it and it's the amount of electrons that spin around it that determine what we see and feel as humans. So our consciousness is measuring our five senses and that's what tells us that this tree is different to a glass of water, for instance. But in reality, they're both made up of exactly the same things, which is particles. But it's because each particle is programmed slightly different to the other, it creates the illusion that these things are different. This is where the programming comes in. Okay, so let's look at this a little bit more closely now. So every nucleus has a set number of electrons that spin around it. And these spin around in sets of rings. So the first ring can hold just two electrons. The second ring can hold eight. The third ring can hold eight. The fourth ring, 18. And the fifth ring, 18. And so on and so on. So let's look at the oxygen atom. An oxygen atom has two rings. The first ring can hold two electrons and the second ring can hold eight. However, there's only six in an oxygen atom. So when two hydrogen atoms come along, which only have one electron, these can actually merge with the oxygen atom to fill up the second ring so that there's eight electrons. Now, when this happens, it's called a molecule. And this particular molecule is called H2O, which is what we see and feel as water. So when atoms change like this and form together, it changes our reality. So what we see and feel as humans uh, is different based on the combinations of these atoms. Now what's interesting about this is that atoms themselves cannot think. They don't have the ability to think. But we're fully made up of atoms. So where does consciousness come from? Well, it's important to, to note that consciousness must be totally separate to the physical world. And science has proved this with the discovery of atoms. So what happens to our spirit, as the spiritualists like to call it, uh, when the physical body goes back into the earth? It must be separate, it must still remain. Now science doesn't have a way of proving this yet because today's technology cannot measure spirit, it can only measure physical matter. Now here's where it gets even more interesting because scientists have now proven that when we observe atoms with or without consciousness, they actually change their behavior. Now there's an experiment called the double slit experiment. 
where scientists fired electrons one at a time through two slits and they measured where the electrons hit on a back wall. Now normally this would just create two lines on the back wall because electrons are matter. However, what it did create was a wave pattern which was lo lots of lines on the back wall. The same way as water would if it went through the two slits. So, to do this the electron must have gone through both slits at the same time and then interacted with each other on the other side to create the wave pattern. Now this is impossible, so scientists said, right, we're going to see what the electron's doing as it goes through the two slits. So what they did was they set up a camera on the slits to see what it was doing. And the electron actually knew this and it changed its behaviour because it knew that it was being watched. And it went back to creating just two lines on the back wall instead of lots of lines. So the electron, which is in every piece of matter, ourselves, everything we see around us, changes its behaviour as soon as we observe it. So this brings up many new theories as to what reality is. Um, one theory is like in the Matrix where artificial intelligence has took over the world and they're using our bodies as fuel. But to me this doesn't quite make sense because computers do not need organic life to survive on like we do. So this just doesn't really make sense to me. Another theory is that we could be some kind of futuristic fish tank in an existence or reality that we're totally unaware of and this is just all for entertainment purposes. Um, and to them time might not even exist which has actually been proven in more advanced versions of the double slit experiment. Because what they did was they actually got someone to observe the electrons after they went through the two slits and before they hit the back wall. And when they did this, yes the two slit the two slits and the electrons went back to forming two lines on the back wall. However, they actually changed their behaviour before they went through the two slits, which is before they were observed. So the fact that time is just an illusion has actually been proven now. Time is just an illusion to our consciousness. Now this brings me back to the spirit of silver birch. Now silver birch was a, a spirit that came through a trans medium in the early 1900s and Silver Birch's mission was to come to Earth to try and tell us the reality of life and what we're here for and what happens when we pass to the spirit dimension. And to me Silver Birch has gave the most realistic explanation for all this so far and what Silver Birch said was this, matter is inferior, spirit is superior. Matter lives only because it's the reflection of spirit. It is the essence of which all physical life is made, for spirit is life and life is spirit. The creator of all things is the great spirit, which is all that is, and is constantly evolving, not to achieve perfection, as evolution is infinite. So the physical world was created to provide the conditions necessary to assist spirit evolution, as physical matter would not function without spirit. So in other words, without spirit, none of this would exist because we are spirit here to observe everything to make it a reality. And because the physical world isn't spirit, it's actually atoms and atoms themselves are not conscious, spirit must be the only thing conscious and the only thing evolving. So to conclude this video, it's important to understand that physical and spirit are separate dimensions working together as part of an evolution process. Uh, it's kind of like a self-learning computer program where with creativity anything is possible. And because spirit is the only thing evolving, then spirit really is superior to matter. So when it comes to science and reality, the next time somebody says to you something like, I believe when you're dead, you're dead, you might ask them to rethink that belief. So that's the end of this video, thanks for listening. If you are interested in this kind of thing, please subscribe to my channel, Real Spirit Dynamics. And if you are interested in particles, I did watch a good documentary the other night called uh, Particle Fever, and that's on Netflix at the moment, so you might want to watch that. And thanks for listening.